I'm so excited to do this podcast. I can't explain. I have been wanting to do a podcast series on the greatest women in Islam. And it's funny because you guys actually want that too. You've you've requested for me. And, you know, I think in a time where it's really hard, it feels like things are hard for women. Um, it's really amazing to look at some of the most amazing women that lived in the hardest times. So it's not like we're going to go look at some women that had a really easy life or they were, you know, like sometimes people look at prophets. They said, well, they're prophets. They could do that. But, you know, I'm just human. I'm just a regular person. Well, we're going to look at quote unquote regular women that were in really difficult times and they didn't just excel. They were the women who the prophet peace be upon him said were the best of women. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he gave some of them salam. So subhanAllah, we're going to look at people that are extremely relatable, sisters that are extremely relatable, but incredibly inspirational to show us that we can't just do a great job. We can do an amazing job no matter what the environment, no matter what the circumstances, we're going to look at some women that have risen above Four women in particular that were promised paradise. I mean, I can't think of any better example than somebody who was already like check promised paradise. SubhanAllah with great examples for us to follow. So we're going to dive into the first one today. Let's do it. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us here at the Mindful Muslim Speaks podcast where we are empowering women to grow and thrive. And we're doing no less of that today with going into our inspiration series, inspirational Muslim women series, which is going to just get us pumped, motivated, and understand that regardless of our environment, regardless of the circumstances, we cannot just, just do well, we can thrive. And subhanAllah, uh, we have some examples of women today that are just incredible because um, I think a lot of us, we think that these things are far-fetched. How can we ever be as good as these women? But no, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us through these very practical examples in the lives of these women that we are able to do really, really well beyond what our situations um, seem to make us think we can do. And, you know, success is something everyone strives for in this world. But what we sometimes forget to recognize is that the true meaning of success can only be defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I was talking to a sister the other day about that and how she was struggling because of the pressures of her parents and the pressures of society and career. And, this. and I'm going to show you a woman today who has incredible balance. She was like I don't know how to say it, living in the most difficult of times. We see women now like, oh, feminism, let me let me jump on the, the bandwagon, you know, women's rights. Yeah, they're incredibly annoyed with men and they have to stake their claim and make their point. Okay, I have a woman who made her point. She made her position. She was one of the most powerful women in all of her area. And at the end of the day, she was promised paradise and given uh, given glad tidings, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Jibreel. And she did her, her job as a wife, Islamically. She did her job as a mother to the point where even one of her children were also promised paradise. Only four women were, so, we were going to cover today some of the four best Muslim women ever. And she and her daughter were two of them. So I don't know about you, but when I think of beautiful examples of how I can be as a woman every day, we're going to be looking at one of those today. And I want to tell you, my focus is going to be less on the entire story of the woman, even though I will give you enough of the snippets for you to understand the story if you've never heard or to remind you if you've forgotten. But my main focus is going to be how you can apply that to your life. And I think that's the piece that's often missing, right? Like, okay, that's nice. I go to the masjid. I go to a khutbah. I hear a really nice story. And then I go home and I like go right back to my regular life. No. Today, we're going to show you how you could take those lessons and apply them to today. Now, there are four women who could measure up to these high standards of greatness and, you know, subhanAllah, this great character. And they are these four women I'm going to mention now. And, you know, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent us the prophet, peace be upon him, as an example of an ideal character for the ummah. And, and you know, he told us how to have everlasting success. But oftentimes women feel like, okay, I hear all these really great stories of men, but what does that look for me as a female? Well, we're going to get into that in this series 
super excited and inspirational Muslim women. So let's talk about who these four women are and let's dive right into our first um, woman. Right before we do, I just want to say a huge shout out, shout out to um, all the women who are in the two courses right now. One is finishing up a course, another one is finished, is uh, starting another inshallah and sa'ad and we're so happy to have you um, in the courses and here in our podcast community. The first one is to the women who are finishing up the emotions course. I am incredibly impressed with how these women have been able to not ignore their emotions any longer and honestly just dive into what they're feeling and, you know, using the tools that I, that we, we provide them with to like actually do the work. And the, you guys will hear later on, the results have just been amazing. The things that these women have been saying they've been experiencing because they're not ignoring it, because they're addressing it. Very, very excited um, um, for them. And very, very hopeful. Alhamdulillah. They didn't just let it come in. They like did something about it. And for all the sisters who are um, in our emotions course, I mean, excuse me, who are our marriage course that are really, really saying, you know what? I'm not going to depend on my parents anymore. I'm not going to depend on society to tell me what I need to do. I'm going to know for myself what I'm supposed to do. And they, they've been taking the reins and taking control and really taking back their life in that sense. And I wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them all spouses that are the coolness of their eyes. Incredibly impressed with those women as well who are about to embark on a huge journey together with us. So very excited. Alhamdulillah. Lastly, we have a book club our free book club is coming up um, the end of this month. We're going to start and we're supposed to do a really great book, um, inshallah, business ta'ala, which is the the mind shift set. So we're going to, um, the Muslim mindset, I believe, or we're, we, we're not completely 100%. It's going to be something between that and um, I can't, I don't want to give it away yet because we're still in the middle of voting, but get on that list below in the show notes if you don't know how, um, DM me on Instagram. All right. So, and by the way, guys, on Instagram is where I make all my announcements of all the free stuff that we're doing. And I don't want you to miss any of that. All right. So let's dive into that today. We're going to talk and start with uh, Khadija radiallahu anha. Um, may Allah be pleased with her. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, his statement for her was, she believed in me when all others disbelieved. And what I want to say is, if you don't really know what it was like in the time of, um, you know, Khadija, we're going to get into that in a second. I think it's really important to paint the stage of like what life was like for both of her and the Prophet, peace be upon him, how hard it was. But their marriage probably had a ton of pressure. Talk about today and our marriages and all the stuff we got to go through and you know, all the, all the, um, you know, fitna with Facebook and social media, like forget about fitna. Their lives were constantly in danger. It was incredibly dangerous. So we're going to get into like all of the pressure on their marriage, but then also how she just handled so much of it with ease to the point where the Prophet peace be upon him was so in love with her that even after she passed, he couldn't get over her and said no wife ever could compare to her. And so that's a beautiful, beautiful love story right there. But the blessings of Khadija radiallahu anha, she, they're really too much to bear, but she's most famous for being the first woman to believe in Islam, right? So this is the time where there was no Islam. And then the Prophet peace be upon him was given the revelation. He believed and right after the first person to accept with his own wife. So that says something about the trust between them. Like imagine your husband husband comes home and says, hey, honey, there's this new religion and I'm the prophet. I don't know that all of us would respond in the best of way, but because she knew of his incredible, impeccable character, um, she knew he wouldn't ever just say something, um, you know, and subhanAllah, she was the first to accept Islam. And the other thing she's famous for is that she was the only woman who, um, what Jibreel came and Jibreel, the angel Jibreel, came to her household. He didn't go to any other wife that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had. And one time the Prophet, peace be upon him, told Khadija, Oh, Khadija, here is Jibreel and he is sending Allah's salam upon you. Can you believe that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala personally came to say salam to Khadija radiallahu anha through the angel Jibreel. I mean, I would want to be that woman. Would you not want to be that woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically came to? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise her in the ranks and allow us to be like her. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Please say Ameen for yourself. Um, and so he is sending salam upon you and he is giving you salam. And if giving you the glad tidings of a house in Jannah where there will be no noise or struggle. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the point to tell her, don't worry, you're going to get a house in Jannah and there's not going to be any noise or struggle there. Clearly, she was hearing a lot of noise. Now, you have to understand, 
women talk, right? So she's getting a lot of pressure from society and there's a lot of struggle that she's going through. There's so much. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising her a house in paradise. He's giving her salam and promising her ease, subhanAllah. So how did she get that? See, like you don't just get that salam. You don't just get that. So like subhanAllah, what did she do? We're going to get into that and tell you how you can apply these things, like I said, to your daily life. Um, but I do want to tell you her response because I'd love to know like when someone is told that, how do you respond? You're not like, oh, jazakallah, like you don't do that because that, that word is, is not the appropriate word to say back to Allah, right? So she said, Allah is salam and may salam be upon Jibreel and may salam be upon you, Ya Rasulullah, you, O Messenger of Allah. So like subhanAllah, that was her response. Allah is salam. Like there is no peace but Allah. I already have peace because Allah, you know, showed me himself, you know, not in a physical sense, subhanAllah. But her story is really similar to the way women struggle today. She lived in a time of jahiliyyah, a time where women were not equal to men. So much to the point where they were buried alive. Girls were buried alive. It was a burden to have a girl. It was horrific. I mean, now we have some bad stuff, but honestly, guys, nothing like the way women were treated back then. And just like women now are in feminism, always trying to rise above, but honestly, she didn't get caught up in labels. She didn't get caught up in trends and movements. She was hyper-focused on what she needed to do, which is to be a good woman. And she focused on her energy, on herself, not on trends and following things. And I think this is the thing that we need to learn. She wasn't following movement. She was creating her own movement through her own akhlaq, through her own good character and the way she dealt with every single person in every single interaction. Now, she just let her actions speak for themselves, let's just say. She was one of the most desirable women in Mecca because she was gorgeous, because she was wealthy, because she was powerful. And so what I want you to understand here is this is a woman who all the guys want. They want to be married to her. They want her to give them five minutes of their day but she was never arrogant. She was never like, you know, some women, you know, if you go on Instagram today, as soon as you, they know a whole bunch of guys want them, they post a whole bunch of pictures that look incredibly seductive. Let's just keep it real. Or even if they're hijabis, they have their makeup on and they're pretending to look into the sky and have a thought, but actually they're just showcasing their beauty. So everybody could say, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Like, this is my point, guys. Women like Khadija are like, they don't have time for that. Not just because there was an Instagram in those days, but because they're like, that is not who, what I'm focused on. Like, alhamdulillah, if that happens, that's great. Guys like me, people think I'm pretty. People think I'm powerful. That's nice. She was not affected by that. She didn't eat and, and, and move into that. She just like kept it moving, kept going about her business. She didn't do that stuff. So that's why Allah gave her salam, okay? Allah, Allah doesn't give salam to such type of things and behaviors. And I'm not making fun of anyone in particular. I'm making fun of the attitude as women that we think we have to do as soon as we find out that we have enough followers on Instagram or we have enough followers on TikTok and we have to start showcasing who we were. What I want you to understand about Khadija radiallahu anha is she didn't showcase herself ever. Her good character showcased itself. Like when you're that good, you don't have to even showcase yourself. She was that confident and that good. And I know many of you don't have a ton of confidence. And so I work on that a lot with women. If you struggle with that, definitely DM me. I have some solutions for you. But she was a woman who was confident, not because everybody told her she was amazing. She just was really a good person, to be honest. And she was focused on, on what she wanted to do in life. And she um, had already been married twice at this point. I think that's really important to note, right? She's not young and gorgeous. She's like almost 40, gorgeous, you know, in terms of inside, outside, powerful. And she had already been married twice and it didn't work out. You see, we think these women that have these amazing, oh, that can't be me. Look at her. She had it so easy. Guys, she was married twice and it didn't work out. So here she is a divorcee and people still wanted her. Now, I want to say something about that. Um, in our Muslim community, I was talking to a woman just the other day who was like, I am you know, divorced, no one's going to marry me. And because that is a stigma that we've placed on ourselves. So I just want to throw out here that in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, even in the time of Jahiliyyah, that was not a problem. And by the way, the Prophet, peace be upon him, married divorcees. If you're a divorcee, you're fine. I was divorced and then remarried. I'm the happiest in my life ever right now, alhamdulillah, in my marriage now. So 
don't worry about that stuff. Don't let shaitan trip you up with that stuff. And don't think as a woman, if you ever have a marriage and it doesn't work out, that's the end of your life. It's not. Okay. She was earning her. And you say, oh, sister, but the men today, I know they don't think like that. There are men who think like that still. I, my husband is one of them. Okay. I found one. So Alhamdulillah, no worries, guys. She was earning her own money and had the struggle of everyone trying to take advantage of her. All right. So we talked about the nice side of it, right? Everybody is a, oh, she's so gorgeous. And she's this. I want to be with her. I want, I want to, and women are jealous of her. I want to be like her. But guess what, guys? She did have a fitna because of that attention. And she was not asking for it. She did not, like I said, post all over the place, put herself in front of people, even in like, you know, we have Instagram nowadays back then, believe me, guys, they had some type of a social media. It just was in a different form, right? Every, every time has that. But my point is she didn't like put herself out there, but still she had the struggle. People want to take advantage of her. Unfortunately, especially men, she had to constantly deal with men. They try to use her, take advantage of her in her business. So she was a very powerful career woman. That also says something to women about the fact that you can be powerful and have a career. But I think what Khadija talks, teaches us, Radilanha, is about balance beautiful balance, absolutely gorgeous balance. You might have heard me talk in my last podcast about it's the year of. Don't be afraid if you're not balanced. And I still say that, okay? I'm still gung-ho about that this year. But what I will say is she did have some beautiful balance. And I think that we could still find a bit more balance by looking at her as a beautiful example. All right. So now at this time, um, she had to, like I said, she was kind of, men were always trying to take advantage of her. So she would always try to find like a business manager. This is, you know, pretty smart of her. Like, okay, people are constantly attacking me, want to take advantage of me, deal with me personally. So I'm going to find this business manager, like, you know, a CEO of a company would do. You're not going to like run your own business. You're going to find like a manager for the business. She would find business managers to be out in the front for her because it made more sense, right? That's what I also love about Khadija Radilanha. She was very practical and smart. She wasn't like, like, think about this, ladies. She wasn't like, oh, that's it. You know, they can't do that to me. I'm going to be out in the front. I'm going to show them who's who I am. They can't hold me down as a woman. Come on, guys. Like, sometimes you have to like get off your ego and I have to get off my ego and we have to be like, what makes practical sense? For her, she was like, look, I already know I'm, I already know what I have. I already know I'm a good person. I already know that I don't need to prove it to anyone. That stuff is between me and Allah. And that's what I want us as women to understand. We don't have to prove ourselves out there. I've always taken this approach myself with the way I do careers. Like I'm not like trying to front put outside that, oh, I'm hijabi and look at me and I'm pushing forward. Like that's just not what I do. I'm just really passionate about whatever it is that I work on. And then I work my, my tail off in it. I don't really, really try to make any point. I'm just really honestly caring and trying to work hard. So what happens is she was like, look, it doesn't make sense for me to go forward. People are just going to give me trouble. Let me just hire this guy. I'll be behind the scenes. And so she had to put him out there. Plus, no offense, guys, to travel as a woman alone through Syria, through all these places to travel in Yemen and to do um, business deals, it's honestly not safe. And I don't care how strong we want to be as women to travel in far distances. You can get raped. You can get attacked. And um, there's just really so many things that can happen to you. So um, it's never advisable, obviously, to travel alone as women. But at the end of the day, she was not able to fully manage this manager because at that time, you know, things weren't documented like today. There was no technology for her to track her sales and what happened abroad. And so when she tried to find manager after manager and she was not successful in that sense, somebody would always take a third of her money or half of her money. She had no way to tell what she got for deals because everything was based on trust. And so when the Prophet peace be upon him came into her life, it kind of changed everything. And this is a really great point for women who are looking for a husband, and I'll get to that in a second. But I want you to know that she found him through somebody else. She wasn't actively looking. After two marriages, she was like, ugh, not interested right now. So she was just going about her business. And that's something that I think us women, I have women constantly contacting me, wondering how they can find a guy and where they should be looking. And, you know, oh, my parents aren't supporting me. She has no parents supporting her. Okay. Reverts who are listening and people who are in Muslim families who have parents who are not actively supporting them. She didn't have anybody who was actively supporting her and helping her to find a guy. And at the same time, the Prophet, peace be upon him, just came right into her path. And I think that's a beautiful lesson. And that's how my husband came to me. And that's how my daughter's husband came, just came right in out of nowhere. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that. And he's the best keeper of promises. When you're doing the right thing and you're striving, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring someone from which you can imagine as long as you're doing 
A, B, C, D. And we're going to get in a bit of a what she did on a daily basis as per of A, B, C, D, right? You guys who have taken my um, free class recently, I talked a bit about that. And so you are going to see right here how the Prophet, peace be upon him, came as a beautiful marriage into her life when she was just doing the right thing. Okay. Her sister, by the way, had owned some sheep. And while finding a shepherd for her sheep, she had heard of the prophet, peace be upon him, and mentioned to her to hire him. So she heard through her sister was like, hey, I know you're always looking for a new businessman. I found this person who seemed to be extremely trustworthy, has an amazing reputation. And so that says something also for having a great character and reputation, because this is what often help the prophet peace be upon him through his tough times and that's what was helping khadija as well anha, you know so people talk you know and they had talked about him he had a great reputation he was trustworthy he was patient and by the way um it's really interesting to know that every every prophet is a shepherd first the prophet peace be upon him he taught us this as well and that um they have to be a shepherd first, and this is actually so bad on humanity. They have to be a shepherd first because being a shepherd teaches patience. And the reason that's kind of funny is because if you know sheep, if you know animals, if you know anything about like that type of wildlife, they're the most stubborn, ignorant like things you've ever had to deal with. They don't want to listen. And when you have to herd bunches of them across like long distances and, and get them all to stay in one place, it's really hard. You have to know how to deal with them and it, it really builds your character yourself but also they resemble much of humankind um the prophet peace be kind of like alluded to that about how they can be difficult mankind can be difficult and to herd them into the truth can be difficult but you know it teaches a lot of patience so we have to be patient with one another may allah give us that patience so long story short and then I just want to get into kind of like what we can take away from Khadija Radulanhu is she sent a message to the Prophet, peace be upon him, asking him to take care of her caravan. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to Abu Talib and said, Oh, uncle, Khadija has sent me such and such an offer. What do you think? And this also teaches us right here that, that we should go to people of knowledge for opinion. We call like nasiha. We should go to them for guidance. I see a lot of young people, a lot of young women running around there just like trying to figure it out on their own. The Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't do that. Khadija was counseling with her sister. Do we take away this, this beautiful lesson here, guys? And I put this in my in my IG multiple times, I think, in posts. Like, find somebody who knows and then just learn from their experience. Why are we trying to like make mistakes and struggle through it on our own all the time, right? And so uh, it, this just shows also how respectful he was and that he didn't just like, was just like, Oh, I'll just go do whatever he went. And he asked his uncle for advice or, and so forth. And he said, Abu Talib, he said, Oh, my nephew, she's well known to be the richest woman. Allah has blessed you with this opportunity. Do not say no to her. So he pointed out that this might be a really great, you know, opportunity. How old is the prophet peace be upon him? About 25. And so the prophet peace be upon him said, yes. And Khadija agreed to give him 50% of the prophet because she felt it'd be like a really great incentive, you know, for him to, to be more honest. And um, the prophet peace be upon him took the caravan to the city of Basra and not to be, um, Basra, excuse me, not to be confused with Basra of Iraq or Bursa of Turkey. And so um, Khadija, she sent her servant Mesra. So she was very smart. So let's point out some smart things that she did as a female. She knew that, and by the way, that's a lot of profit to lose. 50% just gave it away to this guy who just started. That is a lot. But I mean, obviously, I think she has learned from her mistakes that she's going to get it stolen anyway. So she knew at this point that she accepted certain things and she wasn't out there on, again, the pedestal of feminism screaming like, hey, you know, like, da -da -da, look at me, look what's happening to me. But she was able to just be smart and make a business decision that made sense at that time. Now, because she made that sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her even the more richest woman in the world. So there's a lesson to be learned in that wisdom of kind of be patient for a minute and then better stuff will happen. But either way, she wasn't a fool and she sent Mesira with the prophet. She sent one of the, the people with the prophet to, to kind of keep an eye on him. And when they returned, Mesira told Khadija of the care and concern that the prophet had shown for her business and of the honesty in his dealings and transactions, saying he had never seen anybody like that before. It's been narrated that there was a cloud sheltering the prophet, peace be upon him, um, 
And, you know, no doubt, doubts that this can happen during the time. Like the, the whole time there was something special about the prophet. And he made <clears throat> double or triple the prophets that anyone before she had ever sent. So clearly he has a type of barakah for his honesty and his good dealings. And there is no question that the prophet, peace be upon him, obviously would have extra blessings. And thus, in 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 uh, closing, in a sense, um, Khadija radiallahu anha, kind of had some increased emotions for him. She was not a woman that was attracted to him because he brought her a lot of money, okay? She was attracted to him because she had not seen a character like that before. And I want us as women to be impressed with things like that. I want us not to be impressed with what degree the guy has and be impressed with, um, you know, um, how much money our husband makes. I want us to be impressed with character first. And that's something that this beautiful woman, Radilanha Khadija, did. And just so you know, um, she is, it's okay if you notice she had some feelings of love for him. And she heard about him from her sister. And she did not try to pursue him herself. She didn't start messaging him. She didn't start going after him, talking to him on the side after work. She did everything through someone else. And that's another beautiful lesson. And I want you to know also that once she was married, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had her as like a best friend, basically. And she was the one who believed in him, like he said, when no one else would. And remember, she's the famous one from the story with the cave of Hira, where he was squeezed by Jibril, right? Iqra. And <clears throat> he came home running from the cave right into her arms and said, cover me, cover me. So she was an incredible support and comfort for her husband. And for that reason, he was incredibly in love with her. All right. So let's summarize kind of what we talked about. Our mother Khadija Radilan has, she was a successful, very successful businesswoman. So if you're a woman that wants a career, that's something to understand and know. She was amongst the Quraysh and has been characterized, that's her tribe, right? And has been characterized as resolute and noble, commanding respect within her tribe. And she was associated with many honorable names, such as Amirat Quraysh, the princess of Quraysh, and Khadija al-Kubra, -Al Khadija the Great. And by the way, guys, you don't get the names of being the great when you, when you don't deal with people well. I want you to think of every single person you deal with every day, your mom, your dad, your neighbor, your friends, you know, the lady down the street at Target that you have to see at the, cash the cashier. Like, I want you to understand her interactions on a daily basis with people or Primark, sorry, wherever, wherever you shop in your country, um, wherever you are, people saw her and she was amazing with everyone. So I want you to know this is a woman who had a control of her emotions, had a control of her character, and she knew how to deal with people. And so if we don't feel like we're that person, maybe that's a space where we should begin. Like I said, that's all I do with women because I want women to know if you don't take a hold of those things, your everyday interactions, your everyday emotions, feelings, and thoughts, it makes everything else hard. So she was very smart in that respect. And she was constantly embodying the honor of her names throughout everything she did, right? Um, and she was also very much not just into herself. So she wasn't like, I'm a career woman, I'm a business woman. She had a balance. She was an amazing wife, an amazing mother. I'll talk about that in a second. And um, she also did things for the community. She was feeding and clothing the poor, she never believed in worshiping idols, even when, even though at the time, by the way, guys, everybody were idol worships, were worshipers. She had great character even before Islam came. So Islam made her character even greater. And by the way, she, imagine like if everybody is bad to you, you could feel like, like I told you, a lot of people took advantage of her. You could feel like, oh, what's the point? Let me give up. Like these guys are always taking advantage. No, she was just like, no. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be successful. She wasn't letting things get her down. Do you notice that? Because I'm sorry, if you were the only woman in society, if women in general were just treated really bad. Like I just told you how amazingly powerful and amazing she was. There were a lot of women who did not have that great of a life and she did. And so she could have easily been like, oh, you know, this isn't going to work out. Eventually it's going to, it's all going to fall apart. Like she was not depressive. That's the other thing I understand. She was very positive. And you're going to say how, and I'm going to tell you like, Again, that stuff takes means taking control of your thoughts and then your thoughts, your emotions follow. So what can we take away from Khadija Radilanha? And by the way, she ended up funding a lot of the Islamic movement for the Prophet, peace be upon him. And I think this also is a lot of the reason why, you know, the scholars talk about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined the two together. But she was about 40 when she married him and he was about 25. So imagine that you're marrying a 25-year-old guy. You know, that could be something where you feel like, oh, you know, maybe I'm older. He's not going to love me. 
No, she didn't question herself. She didn't question the marriage. Okay. <clears throat> and now let's just see what are some po uh, powerful takeaways. One, we learned from Khadija Radiallahu that women can hold powerful positions. Yes, they can. Islam allowed it. Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her salam. So for all those women that think that Islam is in any way oppressive, or oppressing them or holding them back, their hijab is holding them back. She was a hijabi, okay? When she when she once she understood that from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her salam. She was incredibly powerful, incredibly career driven. Allah gave her salam. So how can we say Islam holds us back? Does that make any sense, right? Subhanallah. Don't listen to people. Don't listen to the waswas of society and they're going to teach you that. That's completely ridiculous, all right? They also, <clears throat> she also didn't let her uh, position come before her priorities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She had a beautiful balance. So even though she did her career, she didn't forget that she was a wife. She didn't forget that she was a mother and she did those jobs equally as well. So she didn't, she didn't let her career take over her life. So also acknowledge that. And that doesn't mean go ahead, do that thing and ignore everything else. Delay marriage, neglect your husband and kids because you have to make your place in the world. Nope. So there's that balance. Take care with that. Okay. Just to acknowledge that piece. All right. So next, being steadfast in strength and what we believe, even if we live in a society where everyone else tells us what we believe is wrong or unnecessary or over the top. So I want you to remember, she lived in a society where there was no Islam. They didn't, there was no Google. You can't like Google Islam, guys. There was no Google, right? There's no internet. Once you bring, oh, my husband's a prophet and we have this new religion, religion, you know she was getting laughed at. You know she was getting mocked. Even if she started off as this amazing woman, as soon as she accepted the message with the prophet, peace be upon him, her life became extremely difficult. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you are granted gender where there is no noise and no struggle right? So she did go through turmoil, guys. It wasn't like her life was a bed of roses. This is not what we're describing. And we can maybe get into more of that in the future if you guys are interested. But the point is, once she accepted Islam, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah, she did not go back. She wasn't like, oh my gosh, before I was so amazing and popular and everybody wanted to marry me and now people are mocking me and making fun of me and they're calling my husband names. Why did I accept Islam? This is like so hard for me. I don't know why I need this struggle in my life. I should just get rid of it. I would be that. I hear women say that. It's really hurtful. So let's look at our, our, uh, our sister Khadija and look how she lived. Remember Khadija lived in a time where literally everyone worshiped something else and her family, friends, and neighbors pressured her and judged her, but she didn't cave in. That's what I want us to know. How did she not give in, sister? Sisters, you have to believe and understand your religion. Learn about your Islam. It will be so easy once you learn about Islam. Like we're learning about Islam today, right? To see the beauty and power that women have in Islam. SubhanAllah. Next, she had so much generosity and time and money towards the poor and the needy and furthering Islam. She was not shy about her Islam. She talked about it. She helped the poor, the needy. She made time for giving back to the community. She also had a high self-esteem but she wasn't arrogant. She turned down so many marriage proposals. Being the most successful woman in the world made her highly desirable, but she resigned herself to being a widow and just taking care of herself and her family. And she was just minding her own business saying, I'm just going to, you know, focus on doing this, this career and, and taking care of my family and being good with society. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent her something really beautiful, right? The other thing is she broke the stereotypes of our community that older women who are divorced can't remarry. She was on her third marriage when she married the Prophet, peace be upon him. And if she broke the stereotype that older women can't marry younger men, right? Oh my goodness. All these stereotypes we have a lot in our communities. Come on. All of them I've heard in the Arab, in the Desi, in the African. I've heard so much of this. It is not from... Islam. Let's just keep it real. She also broke the stereotype of asking the prophet, peace be upon him, to marry her. I left that out. She asked him to marry her. Like I said, she didn't go after him. She wasn't texting him. She went through people. But the point is, she proposed to him. So she reminds us that love can come when you're not looking, right? It can come with stellar character and not even looking uh, to try to find a guy. She was hyper-focused on making herself 
a good woman, right? And so she teaches us that also being a good woman brings you an excellent spouse. I'm going to say that again. For all the women looking, being a good woman, yourself, how is your salah? Some women are like not praying at all and they think they're going to get a really honest, great husband. Some women are praying just the five prayers and nothing else and even not on time and they think they're going to get an amazing spouse. Is that really fair? I'm not saying that that you can't change. If you change and do better, then maybe you'll get better. But let's be fair. We can't want amazing guys when we're not amazing women just yet. And so I posted something on Instagram like people are just trying to arrive before their time. Let's put some time. If you're 20 something years old or 30 something years old, you haven't lived that long. If you haven't already figured out who you are, what you need to do in terms of like your character and how to carry yourself as a female in an excellent way, an excellent way, like Khadija, maybe we should invest our time on that first. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us this help. It's really important. And that's what a lot of women who are actually in um, the marriage course that they just joined, because I do have a free class, but you guys know I also have a course. And the course is teaching them how to first deal with themselves. The whole entire module one, because of the story of things like this with Khadija, Radulanha, you guys know the method is very much Islamically sound. It is just focusing on making the woman amazing. And that's something really, really important for us to focus on as women if you're looking for a spouse and focusing on making yourself amazing so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring things in your path. Let's talk about her as a mother. She was an incredible mother. And do you know how we know that? Because her was, daughter was Fatima, you know, and she was counted as one of the other four best women in Islam. So this teaches us the excellence of our own children comes from our own excellence first. You know, when I'm a mother every day striving out there, trying to deal with my kids, it's really hard. But I know that if I can be amazing indirectly, unconsciously, my kids will see stuff. Like when I'm driving on the road, me not having road rage is a lesson every day to my children on how not to respond to angry, mean people on the road. But likewise, me having road rage and cursing people out and waving my fingers and nonsense is another lesson to my children every day on how to deal with stress and difficult people. Which lesson are you teaching your children? I'm going to ask the moms, right? And so the same thing with anybody else who irritates us. Could be in-laws or it could be, you know, the lady at the store, could be like our spouse. We are teaching every day our response and our response needs to be better, ladies, all of us, myself included. Every day I'm reevaluating myself. How can I be better? How can I be better? And we have to have that humility. We have to. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us that. And so, subhanAllah, she was an excellent mother. She taught us that the excellence of our children comes from our own excellence. So for, for all of us who wants, who want amazing children, Muslim children, I want to ask, are you an amazing mother? Are you an amazing example? Are you showing them everything you want them to copy? And that's our first question to ourselves. And then she also then ensured that following through with really high standards for her kids, and she was super consistent with them as well. And, <clears throat> and she was an incredibly supportive wife for her husband. She had great pressures on herself, and he had great pressures, and they had a really great way of not blaming one another, not putting their pressures on one another, and instead loving and supporting one another and having empathy that the other one must be going through a lot. The prophet, peace be upon him, he empathized with her and she empathized with him. Now I know some women are going to say, well, my husband isn't the prophet. My husband isn't empathizing with me. But see, that's the thing. Khadija radiallahu she was out in society with people being horrible to her all the time. She still found a way to empathize with people and be kind to people, even when they were not kind to her. And that is the amazing character that she was loved for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These beautiful things. You know, the better person is the one who is respectful. A lot of women are like, well, why do I got to do it first? Why can't my husband do it first? Well, the better person. Which one are you? You want to be the better person or the not better person? <laughs> the better person, male or female, the better person is the one who is better with the other person or gives a great response or doesn't, you know, fall into going back and forth with them. So the last thing I want to say is she was a female role model that just honestly embodied great character and consistency in her daily behavior and worship. And besides, we know the Prophet, peace be upon him, never got over her, even to the point that Aisha, radiallahu anha, his, his wife after her, you know, when he was remarried, he had otherwise 
She was jealous of her. Imagine being jealous of a woman who has passed away because your husband is still gushing over how great she was and reminding her how great Khadija was. She was jealous of her and she wasn't even a threat to her. He loved no one more than her during his lifetime. So if the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in awe of Khadija, shouldn't we be in awe of her as well and think, gosh, how could I even take one of these takeaways away? I encourage you guys to save this episode. I encourage you to bookmark it however you could do it in your podcast area. And there's a reason I'm telling you. Because I want you to come back to Khadija over and over again. I want you to come back to her and every day try to just do one more thing that she does or every week or every month or every year. Maybe this Ramadan, you could start to build some goals based on Khadija. I'm encouraging and, and introducing these women before Ramadan because I want to spiral back to them all Ramadan and talk about how we can use these women as a role model, but also as like some goals that we have for ourselves for 2021. Bookmark this, save this episode, however you can do it, because you know, they get lost in the mix. Come back to Khadija over and over again and try to do a little bit more of the way she is every time. Okay? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Have an amazing Friday. I will see you back on Monday. And I have a little bit of surprise. I may be traveling. And if it works out, I will reveal to you where I travel to, inshallah, next week. But wishing you the best. Please keep me in your da'as. And if you haven't already, guys, leave us a review on Apple. There's so many women struggling out there. And they don't know if this is an amazing place to come to for information. You just leaving that acknowledgement sometimes for another woman gives her the confidence to listen in and get some information that could honestly change her life. And you guys can be part of that change as well. All right. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Talk to you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.